Hi there, friends. I thought I would continue this painting um, in just regular speed so you can kind of see, you know, what I do on the next section of this. I'm going to fill in some of these stems. Doing a little wet into wet just to let that drop in that space and flow. Using a fairly small brush with a good point. It's not too horribly tiny, but it's kind of small. Let's see, let's just drop that in just wet on dry. I do like wet into wet. I just think it has a beautiful look. Some of these lavender colors going. Re-wet some paint I had the other day. Add a little water to it. And this one I am going to do wet into wet. So I'm going to wet that space in the flower first and really tickle the paper with the brush. And I want to be able to see a sheen on the paper. I don't want big hunky puddles like I just made a big puddle. So I'm going to try to slurp that up with a little bit of a thirsty brush. Just tap it into my paper towel. And then let's start dropping in some of this. This nice purpley color. It's such a fun thing to do on a snowy afternoon. It's really gray outside, and so it's really nice to be around these florals. So these paintings that, um, you know, I've drawn from life. I have an arrangement that I buy, you know, I purchase the flowers and arrange it. And, and I do photograph my arrangements just so that I have them later because the, you know, the flowers only last maybe a week. And, you know, maybe I will get around to painting it like right away, or maybe it'll take a while to get back to. So this, um, this little place needs a little more water. The heat's been running like crazy today, and so the air in here is really dry. So when the air in your environment is dry, um, your paint's going to dry up really quick. Maybe quicker than you want. I love dropping that pigment in and just letting it kind of flow out into your space. So I'm just going to continue down. If you've ever noticed, you know, snapdragons on a stem, and other blossoms do this as well, the ones near the top are kind of softer, and they there's a little more green in them before the buds totally open. And then they have, you know, some good intense color, and then as they age, sometimes the color fades out and gets sort of wimpy looking before they curl up and fall off. So I'm gonna paint these that are close together at the same time. So I'm really tickling the paper. I don't know if you can hear the brush. But I'm really tickling that the surface of that paper with the brush so that the water will really go into that paper and then when I drop the pigment on, it just um, it just goes in there so much nice, so much better. So 
And if I want to lighten one area, I can do that. Just kind of go in with a thirsty brush and pull it out. Or maybe I want to darken another area. So I'll grab some more of that purpley pigment and just drop it in a certain area. And while it's all nice and wet, all this nice wet into wet, um, it just fuses really beautifully. You have these really pretty soft edges. And I like that. So let's go in here with some clean water and this little next blossom. Let's see if I can just do the, the last three on this stem all at one time. You know, sometimes if it's been a while after I've drawn the object, sometimes I forget, is that a leaf or is that a petal? It might be a leaf. So I might have to deal with it. All right, so I can, I don't know if you can see a sheen on there, but I've got um, just a right amount of water. Let's drop my purple pigment. I'm running out of my purple. I'm gonna have to mix some more. Um, I used cobalt blue and a little quinacridone rose for this, and it's such a pretty purple. So I think, you know, I go back and I look, is there any place that I want to lift the color just a little bit while things are still kind of damp and flowy and super easy to change? And is there anything I want to drop in a little bit of extra pigment? I'll put it in the throat of that flower. There we go. And then when that's all dry, I'll come back and do the stem. So I'll have things bleeding into each other. Now let's see, let's go and do this lily over here. I'm gonna just turn this upside down so I can reach this part of the paper easily. Get this out of here. And let's go to a little bit bigger brush. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint this wet into wet. And I'm going to cover this little, um, that curled up side of the leaf to the petal there. Do this side as well. Now, let's see. So I have um, a pink that I'm going to mix up with a little bit of quinacridone magenta and some um, Jean Brilliant, which is like a, it's an opaque color, the Jean Brilliant is. It's, um, 
Jean is yellow in French. So it, Jean de Verlaine is kind of like a creamy yellow. And it just tones down this brilliant pink a lot. But it's still really pretty. And now I'm going to try just bringing in just some of that just plain Quinacridone magenta right on the edge. So it's a little bit darker. Just want, I just want a tiny bit of contrast. Let's see how that see how that looks. And if it you know bleeds into that, I'm okay with that. When that when those two dry, when yeah, when those two dry, then I can come back and do these other ones. So let's see what else is around that I can work on. Uh, I like um, having these, you know, not, uh, there's certain things that I do want to fuse together and then other things that I really want to keep apart from each other. Let's see, I'm going to get this green foliage here. I get another water cup. Mix up what I think I might want. Got several greens on my palette that I've been experimenting with. Some Daniel Smith colors, and they are just beautiful. I don't have them on my travel palette because I don't need them all, but when I'm working in the studio on something, you know, I, I like to have like to have a little variety. And these things are so beautiful to play with. And, you know, mix some of them together. You know, some of them have some beautiful granulating quality about them. So again, working wet into wet, I'm going to make sure that this space has, um, I want a nice, I want that paper really wet and saturated, but I don't want puddles laying on top. So I'm going to tickle that paper, make sure that those fibers, it's all cotton paper. You know, when you have a really good paper, it's going to be all cotton. Wood pulp does not, you know, and it's going to say, if it's cotton, it'll say on there. If it's wood pulp, it's not going to tell you anything. It might say acid-free or whatever, but it doesn't mean it's cotton. And it's only cotton if it says 100% cotton. And the cotton is king. It's the best paper. It just absorbs your paint in a lovely, lovely way. And wood pulp just can't do that. It's not its fault. It's just how it is. So I'm just dropping this in. I'm not really disturbing the paper much. Just want to drop it in, get in and get out, and then just let it dry, let it do its thing. Um, as the paint dries, it's going to lighten a little bit, and it's going to settle into the um, spaces of that paper in such a beautiful way. Let's get this leaf that's behind there, and that, that'll make these lighter blossoms really pop. This one, I, this leaf I don't want to touch until I know that pink is dry, because I don't want those bleeding together. So let's come around here, tuck right behind that little bud. There's a little bit of leaf tip that extends out there. And again, I don't want this to be, you know, have a puddle on it. I just want a sheen. So if I have a little bit too much water, then I will 
kind of tap it on my paper towel to slurp up, make a thirsty brush. And your brush acts like a siphon. It's going to either deliver um, wet to this surface or it's going to slurp up the wet from this surface. So let's gather a little bit more green. I always have a test sheet next to my next to whatever I'm working on just so that I know if I've mixed something that I really like or if I need to adjust it. And I'm so glad this brush has a tiny little point. It allows me to get into skinny little places. And if I get a little, you know, too hasty, I'm gonna end up with a little bit of bleed over, but that's okay too. Not a big deal. So let's continue down this little branch of flowers. I'm going to go in with a pretty skinny brush. Let's add some more of that stem. And I'm always wiping off any little beads of water that, um, sheesh, that kind of gather on the ferrule of the brush because I don't want them dripping into spaces that I, where I don't want them. Can have all this nice painted surface going and then something drips off the side of your brush here and oh gosh what a mess so once you've laid down that little track of water in the space that you're wanting to fill you just touch that color you know your pigment in and it just fills that space so nicely And it's funny, being a, um, oops, I really went over the lines there. Being a right-hander, you would think I would learn to go left to right. But sometimes, you know, as I'm working around this page, I end up going right to left. So I have to be really mindful of not sticking my hand in a place with wet paint. Otherwise, you can smear something really lovely and make a train wreck out of it. And it's so fun to see these stems just growing. Let's see, let's go in. I wonder if that's dry. I'll go into these little pink ones next. So they're a very pale pink. Let me mix up my color first. So that one I have a lot of Jean Brilliant, Brilliant, and just a little bit of um, that Quinacridone Magenta. Whoops, sheesh, didn't have my brush cleaned out. See if I can lift some of that other color. So I use um, transparent colors for the most part. And, and I don't use too many staining colors. So usually I'm able to lift things if I, you know, had something like that happen where I left pigment on my brush and didn't give it a good swish and then put it in a place where I didn't want it. Usually I can lift things out. So 
I want to do two of these, maybe three of these little guys next to each other. So I want to make sure that this stays wet while I'm trying to wet this one. And again, I don't want um, a big puddle on there, but I don't want it to dry out on me either. So I'm looking for just a sheen. So I'm really tickling that surface of the paper with my brush so I can get those, um, get this water into the fibers of the paper. And then it's ready to pull in this um, pigment that I'm going to drop in next. So this has a little bit more Jean Brilliant in there. And when you use an opaque color, I or when I use them, I don't, I really don't like to layer with them. If I do use it, it's gonna be on the top layer. And, um, and I'm gonna go in with one direct layer. Cause if you get, you know, too much opaque stuff, it's just kind of, um, it doesn't allow the light to go through the granules of the paint, so it kind of stops, it prevents that beautiful luminous glow that transparent colors have. Now, let's see, where to go next? I'm going to get this green leaf there. And I'm going to go in with a little bit bigger brush because that's not a dinky space. So sometimes, you know, I might just have 10 or 20 minutes to spend on a painting, you know, at, at a certain time in the day. You know, maybe you've got errands, maybe you've got, you know, a Zoom call for something else. Um, but I try to fit in painting wherever I can. Um, I love having longer blocks of time, but sometimes, you know, it just doesn't work out, you know, that way for you to get long blocks of time in. So you take what you can get, make it work. And this type of drawing, you know, or this type of painting where you are doing just one segment at a time, you know, it lends itself to that process really well. You know, certain types of painting, you have to kind of, it's a la prima, all at once. You got to do it all in one go. And those are lovely too. It's just a different way of working. Drop in a little bit darker near here. And then I want to drop in a little more, a little bit lighter color on the upper side. Let's see. I just love, I just want to play around with it. See what I can come up with. I'm going to extend that dark up just a little bit. And that'll make this little blossom pop. And then let's go for this one next. I, I can see a little space where I need to complete an edge. So let me do that first. Complete this leaf behind here. So I want to make sure that ink is dry before I hit it. So I think I'll actually come in on this leaf. This one's not a petal. It's actually a leaf that's behind the petals. So the ink that I used in this um, piece, that fountain pen that I just had, it's a, um, a Lamy fountain pen, Lamy Safari. And in it, I use um, Diatramentous Document ink. And it's permanent. And it dries pretty quickly. 
but you know, I just want to make sure that's totally dry before I bring any water on top of it. So again, with my leaves, I'm going to, I don't want a big puddle. I just want some, um, a nice sheen on top. And then I'm going to drop in my greens. And have a little bit more. Pigment here. A little bit more dark right in here. chair is being really squeaky. So if I ever feel like my brush is a little bit too wet or I'm carrying too much fluid in here, I just tap it on, tap it on this paper towel. Let that absorb the excess out of there. Now, let's see, I think what I'm going to do next, I might come back and these petals are feeling dry. So let's go back to the lily. So I keep working my way around the painting and anytime my water gets dirty, I move it out of the way and I've got a couple of spare cups of water. And then when they get really yucky, then I'll take a break, go clean out the water, stretch my legs. You know, if you sit a long time, you're just, everything goes numb. I have found during COVID with all this, all the time that we're spending at, um, the computer, oh my gosh, you really have to take some mindful breaks and get yourself up away from that screen. Give your eyes a break. Give your legs and the back a break. Okay, I'm going to paint that petal. And look at these. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. These two, I think, are roses. And I'm going to paint those separate. And here's something to be mindful of as well. Um, I use the same colors on my big palette here. So I know, you know, I don't have to go searching through a bunch of tubes. It's, it's laid out on this palette and I use the same colors. And, but as things dry on your palette, I mean on here, they will get, um, you know, the, the, that puddle that you mixed a while ago, it might, you know, intensify. And the thing that you've been adding all this water to, you know, where you've kind of gathered and hoped it would grow, it's getting paler. So you have to be, you know, thoughtful of, you know, what is that mix that you're trying to pick up? All right, now let's go for this green leaf that's behind this little sprig. You paint around those blossoms and then paint around that 
little stem. And I'm going to get this little spot too. A little bit of the purple blood in there because I originally thought it was a um, part of the flower, but it's actually part of the leaflets. That's what this little leaf. Okay, now. Really wet some of this here. You know, to pick up some of this darker color and drop some of that in. Let that flow up into this lighter space. Getting a lot of a lot of extra fluid. So I'm gonna come back with a bit of a thirsty brush and pull that up. And then I'm going to get this little space too. I think that's already started getting a little bit dry. And then I'm going to wait for that to totally dry before I add that stem, which I've left white for right now. Now, let's see. All right, I think I may go make some dinner. Anyway, you've seen a little bit of continuation of this. It's a slow going process, but it's also very meditative. Um, it's a, you know, I really enjoy that. So again, as things dry, then I can come back and paint next to the things that, you know, were wet. Um, I've got some, some of these spaces in here, I need to think about how I want to present them. They're um, big hydrangeas in, in white. And a lot of times in that white, there's some green and a little bit of pale yellow. So um, I want to think about how I want to mix that in. And I may end up doing that next. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this develops. Thanks for watching in. Bye.